this man said yes he said yes it's not remorseful human meat there's not there's no difference between human meat and goat meat are you serious so that was that was what he says and people were like oh this man this is is very stupid person hello hi hello welcome back to my channel welcome back to another episode of tea with Miriam. in case you're new to my channel you don't know what tea with Miriam is every tuesday i do a little something on my channel called a series on my channel called tea with Miriam, where i talk about you know juicy stuff like historical facts historical events historical figures true crime story mystery story you know other juicy 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 information so when i did that every tuesday last week sorry shameless vibes not last week because it's been like a month like over a, a little over a month since i've posted i'm so sorry and one thing happened while i was away two people messaged me to ask me why i wasn't posting oh my god i wanted to cry actually because i was so happy you know i only have like 40 subscribers and how many views maybe like 300 views in total so i was like hmm, nobody's gonna notice i'm i'm away anyways but two people messaged me and they're like oh my god why are you not posting on your youtube and i'm like huh you know me so i'm happy so the last time on uh, Tea with Miriam, we talked about a true crime story. Oh my god, something is wrong with my lighting. It's so weird. Let me fix it and I'll be back. We're good to go. We're just gonna you know, manage this lighting. I don't know, the weather is kind of bad. So so last time we talked about a true crime story in South Africa. So we talked about Moses Sitole, South Africa's serial killer and also known as South Africa's dead Bundy. So if you're interested in that, I will link it in the description box. Oh, you can check it up up above. So today we'll also be talking about a true crime story, but in Nigeria. As I've said before, I said it in my last video, that not to sound like a psychopath, but I'm a true crime junkie. I watch a lot of true crime channels, true crime podcasts. So but the most fascinating type of true crime story to me is cannibalism yeah cannibalism because you know i just find this weird strange like i want to know their thought process like why would you think it's okay for you to eat people like when you see someone walking past instead of saying oh my god this person is so cute you know, just like mm nice ties i would like to eat that or what like i don't understand so that's how i come across this story this story here because we're talking about a nigerian cannibal actually my mom told me about this story in general because i was watching i watched i think was it belisera i can't remember i was one of these youtube true crime youtube channels so i was watching about this korean cannibal that ate his friend is like his classmates so i was like telling my mom about it that oh my god this guy who is so crazy so my mom was like oh my god we have there was a man back in the late 90s 2000 in Oshodi that was eating people and they caught him and everything i was like hmm? what you say what where have i been i need to know i need to know about this so i researched it and i found out about it and now we're gonna talk about it so ladies and gentlemen this is the story of Clifford Oji, the Nigerian cannibal. So, unlike Moses Sitole, when I did Moses Sitole, I did a whole background story about him, his biography, is one of like stories about him, like the kind of life he lived before he eventually become the killer, the serial killer. But unfortunately, there was no information about Clifford Oji's background or anything. So just you know, dive into the story, and that's actually not surprising because it's Nigeria. We don't really care like that <laughs> about doing a background background check for a criminal. You know, just catch you, throw you in prison, or sentence you, and 
that's so nobody's gonna be interested anymore so clifford Oji, the little information about him is that they said he was he was from enugu state in nigeria enugu state but then he lived in lagos he was also a razor blade seller a razor blade vendor at oshodi if you don't know oshodi oshodi is a very big market in lagos like the Oshodi market so he was selling razor blade at Oshodi market but then he will eventually stop selling razor blade and now become a traditional healer or an abalist like he will start telling people like he's an abalist he's a traditional healer he can like take care of them when they when they're sick or he can see the future and stuff like that so he started you know saying he's an abalist it's actually People find it strange because people just thought of it that it's not okay because actually the way his his behavior and the way is like his appearance is similar to that of someone that is like out of their mind. He's always dressed in dirty clothes, his hair was matted, like he's always chasing people around with stick and stuff like that. And he's also he was also homeless. So he built this corner for himself under the Osho de Solo expressway bridge so he built like a shack with tires woods and curtains for it so that's where everyone knows that's where he lived and he's in so everyone referred to him as a madman so he was a very popular madman in oshodi so and this he continued to you know take this cover for a long time until one morning february february 3rd 1999 and one young man joseph billow was coming back from a video if you are not Nigerian, you might be like, what video? Like, it is actually a very common practice for Christians in Nigeria to go for videos, like, from, like, I think 11 or 12 at midnight to, like, 5 next morning. So, Joseph Bolo was coming back from this video, and while he was walking beside the bridge, he had noise, strange noises, like someone was singing or crying or something. So, he could not, like really place that what kind of sound was coming so he decided to go check and he saw that it was coming from under the corner cliff for the object has built for him for himself so he peeped inside then he saw human meat human parts roasting cooking and everything so he was so scared so he started calling people and it was already like morning like 5 6 30 so people and also this is a very big market so people were already coming into the market to start you know their day to open their shops and stuff like that so he started calling them that come and see oh see what i'm looking at here so people started coming in and then they opened the place and they saw they started discovering different parts of human bodies and that was also when they discovered person that was actually crying for help there was a lady there awa wulawa and she, was, she had already been reported missing for a few days so she was there she was in bondage she was like she was almost unconscious she was almost unconscious she was just lying there lifeless and everything so they said to help her so they called the police Oji was not in his little apartment as at that time but then i think it was coming from wherever wherever he went to so he was coming back and then he saw that people were already at his little apartment like it was busted so he started running and the crowd chased after him and they caught him so they called the police that uh, oh this is what we found here so the police came and they started like tearing down the old apartment and they discovered more bodies they it's fresh but they even discovered the head of a woman that was also reported missing this woman was a trader from all the way from acquiring but she usually come into lagos to buy goods and then she would take it she'll come the weekend she'll buy her goods she'll take it to acquire bond to sell and then come back to discover her head and everything so when they questioned oji he also mentioned that he has a he has an accomplice, Tairu. So they went over to Tairu's place. And when they got to this Tairu's place, they also found bodies there. So they took those bodies and they brought them like to the crowd. So they were parading them all around the city with these bodies and everything. And also, while they were going through Clifford Oji's property, and they found a check worth of 80,000 naira and also a mobile phone. So that was where the 
conversation started that okay they think this man is not just a cannibal like a human loving human made loving person i they think he's also a ritualist that he actually sold body parts to ritually because this is actually a very common thing in nigeria in case you're not nigerians they there's some people that use human bodies for rituals for money rituals for you know whatever sick reason they have so they use remember but so there's actually a problem during that especially during that time people were going missing left and right they were suspecting that okay people they were kidnapping people to to sell them to people that will use their part for these rituals and everything so they suspected that Oji was also part of this group that sold women bodies for rituals. So they actually questioned. When the question, he confessed. He said, "Yes, he usually sells these body parts to people for ritual, and then he eats the rest." And also, they were okay. They were like, "Okay, that's actually true." Because for a a mad man or a cannibal that is homeless that doesn't have a job to have a check worth of 80,000 and a mobile phone because this time was late 90s in Nigeria so mobile phone was for the elites there's not something even people that are working that some of them don't cannot afford a mobile phone so for a mad a mad homeless man an homeless man one cannibal to have a mobile phone that is something must be up so when he told them yes I usually sell this but part too ritualists they actually believed but then he said some of his customers were big names in nigerian politics but the police didn't take him seriously they said they thought maybe it was just bluffing because it, there was no evidence that nigerian politicians were part of his customers so they asked him a bunch of questions were like why do you do this like why are you doing this so he said Eating human meat is part of his culture. He has been eating it for, like, before he came to Lagos, he had been eating human meat. And he had been eating human meat for seven years now. He, uh, they're like, he's talking about him and his accomplished Tahiru now. And then he said, they asked him how he gets his, you know, his praise. And so he said most of his praise are women, especially young girls. Young girls are working. On the in the market so he will, he will call them tell them oh i want to buy something can you follow me to my my corner so i can give you money and so then you will, sometimes he said he's going to just capture them because they're young but some is going to like like blow charms on them so they will be unconscious then he can carry them and he said most of the time he usually make these women his sex slaves look like after raping them for several days after raping them into unconsciousness that's when he's going to kill them and then dismember their body parts sell them and it's the rest so they asked him that okay now that you've been caught what if you you are given a second chance like you were released by any chance what would, would you continue to eat human meat and this man said yes he said yes it's not remorseful human meat there's not there's no difference between human meat and goat meat are you serious so that was, that was what he says and people were like oh this man this is a very stupid person he doesn't know so they suspected the police suspected that this man is not of sane mind one one other thing that is fascinating about this whole story was that clifford og was never tried he only appeared in court once where he was found guilty of you know kidnapping murder sexual assault cannibalism and stuff but after that time he was he never appeared in court again he was never tried he was kept on remand at curriculum maximum prison for 13 years and he actually sued the Lagos State Attorney General for some of i think one million naira yes one million naira, and he was kept there for 13 years was kept up for 13 years and he later died august 17 2012 so he was arrested 1999 and then he was kept in prison from that time to 2012 where he later died and they said he showed an extreme case of mental illness and psychosis before he died like he actually you know got to that breaking point and he was just like completely mad and that's ladies and gentlemen is let and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the story of Clifford Oji, the first Nigerian cannibal. Yes, that was a very short story. So if you like this video, feel free to like this video. Does that make sense? So if you like this video, hit the like button. 
I would love to see your comments. What do you think about today's video? And also, if you are not subscribed to me yet, please subscribe. And if this is your first time, please subscribe to my channel. I have amazing, other amazing stories that I'll be bringing to this channel. So thank you very much for hanging out with me today. And I will see you in my next video. Bye, bye. Bye. Or you can just watch my other videos. It will be linked somewhere. Here or here. I don't know. But thank you very much for hanging out with me. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. <laughs>